Okay, hi everybody. Hi, I'm here finally, and I want to give my first shout out to Scott for arranging all this and kind of talking me through all the technical stuff here because I'm still kind of a newbie at all of this. Though my kids try to help me, um, I I'm still learning. So I've got a couple questions here that Scott already sent to me, and um, I'm going to give a read through those as well as I'm going to try to read your questions. And again, like I said, I'm new to all this as I try to read along. All right, first one is from Heidi. Hi, Heidi. And the question is, were you able to keep anything from the show after it ended? And she also says, what's my secrets for looking so young and staying in shape? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that, Heidi. Um, actually, no, we really didn't get to keep anything except the only thing I personally got was the um, sweatsuit that we wore. I think you can see it on the album cover on the back. It's actually kind of crazy colors. It's like a burnt brown and lime green. So we all got to keep that. Anything else I have is really from things that I found when I was either out and about in LA or actually at different um, kind of estate sales or when fans were really kind enough to send it to me. But what I've been told most of the stuff is actually kept somewhere on the Walt Disney Studio lot. And though I've been back there a couple times, I've never actually gotten to go and see what they still have. And as far as Heidi, the way I keep in shape and the way I look, um, well, again, thank you for that. I do work out a lot. I still do my dancing. I do some yoga, do weights, and, of course, I have to practice doing my splits. Yes, I can still do my splits. And um, I think the biggest thing, you guys, is to be happy. Like, happy on the inside really makes a difference. Now, don't get me wrong. I have good days, bad days. But having an attitude of gratitude, I think, really does help. Oh, great. Hi, Heidi. I see you there. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Um, okay. Let's see. This one's from George. And George wants to know um, if I have any great memories But when we were filming the Disney World special down in Orlando. Okay, well, George, I do. So if you remember the scene when we were all behind the Contemporary Hotel and lined up right by the edge of the dock with the big water lake behind us, and Lisa was being funny, taking her picture, and kept saying, step back, step back, and we did, and then, haha, we all fall into the water. Well, actually, it was kind of funny except there was only one little ladder on the side of the dock for all of us to get out of. So we were sitting there taking our time, treading water, and all of a sudden these polyester costumes and these big old heavy tennis shoes started really getting heavy with the water. So like I remember like Nita and Mindy were kind of starting to struggle trying to tread water. So all of a sudden it kind of became a panic and we were kind of pushing everybody towards the dock. So um, that was kind of funny, but not. But now looking back, of course, because everyone survived, it was. Um, let's see, what else? Hi, Stephen, how you doing? I'm trying to read all the questions. Hi, Joel, good to see you guys. Another fun question is, oh, do I keep in regular contact with some of the Mouseketeers? In the beginning, right after the show, I have to say, Nita, because she was like my little dancing buddy, Todd, Kelly, and Curtis a little bit, because Curtis was the oldest, kind of with me. But as the years went by, pretty much Todd was the one I kept in the most contact with. He was kind of like my little brother, and his mom was from Illinois, which is just right next door to St. Louis, and um, she was really sweet and befriended my mom and I when we first got into L.A. and actually let us stay with them until we found an apartment. So we kind of bonded, and um, it was really great. Todd helped me through my mom passed away, and he recently came through town when um, his mom passed away. So we stay in touch. Whenever I get out to L.A., I really try to see him. And actually, recently, Kelly and I have started to touch base again. So it's kind of fun with doing that. Um, all right. Wait, who says nice meeting me at Disneyland? Hey, Facts Life fan. How are you? Hi, Darren. Good to see you guys. Um, do I collect memorabilia from the show? Again, I love it. If you guys got anything you don't want it, send it my way. But I don't have a lot. I do have the Mickey Mouse lunchbox the record album and I will tell you what I do is I collect things in threes because of my kids um, the coloring books the little golden reader books oh you guys it was so cool because when I had my kiddos I would do um, their ritual was I would read feed them and then read them a bedtime story and so I opened up the book and I'd be reading to them and I'd say Mouseketeer Julie and in my head I'm going this is weird because that's me and yet I'm holding my little baby here but it was kind of fun so I try to do things in threes so eventually I can give it to them and they can do whatever they want with it, I guess. Hopefully someday, since Jacqueline's married and um, Patrick actually is engaged, that eventually I'll get some grandbabies along the way and it'll be fun having 
my own little mini Mouseketeer group. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Good to see you. Glad you're watching. Um, trying to check to see what else. Uh, let me look here. Oh, all right. Somebody asked what if I had any favorite musical numbers from the show. Okay, so musical ones were my favorite, especially when there was dancing involved. So I'm going to go, of course, to the big 50s number where we go through the malt shop and magically change. And there I do my big jump splits, which again, I can still do, people. Um, and then the other one would be, if you remember, the Pooh Polka. That was fun. The Maple Leaf Rag, big tap, da tap dance number. And I don't know if you guys remember the one, um, Pop and I did it. It was called Dancin's, um, not Dancin'. And it was kind of a takeoff, if you guys are familiar with, I may be dating myself now, but um, the Donnie Marie show, he's a little bit country, she's a little bit rock and roll. So that's kind of what it was. Pop and I, were, I was the country girl and he was the rock and roll guy. And I loved it just because we were really starting to get into the singing and, and dancing. And actually, I'm going to kind of sidetrack here, but that's kind of what the bummer was when the show ended so abruptly. We were all just really getting to know each other, coming into our own, and they had so many outside extra, um, like, activities for us to do. When Lisa did the gliding, I remember learned how to horseback ride. They were actually going to come back to St. Louis and film me in one of my big Muni production shows here. So there was so much that was going to be really cool, kind of on-location things to do, but unfortunately, we never got the chance to do it which actually is one of the questions here, um, talking about when the show ended, why Why do I think maybe that we're kind of the forgotten Musketeer group? So I think what it is is the very first one obviously was the original, black and white, that was amazing. Now we were the first colored one and um, in color and had all the special effects with Mickey not being there and you know we had to pretend like we were talking to Mickey. But I do remember when we had ended our first season, the the big science fiction movie, The Black Hole, was coming out. And that was one of Disney's first films. Hey, Donna. How are ya? Um, so they were doing that. And kind of the buzz that we heard was um, it was really going over budget. And they had to kind of put everything they had to into that. And so they were kind of picking and choosing between the two of us. So they picked The Black Hole. And The Black Hole didn't do so well. And maybe then, instead of, I don't want to say admitting a mistake, but maybe they just kind of decided to kind of sweep us under the rug and just kind of keep moving forward. You know, but I, there's no hard feelings, because then obviously I went on to do other things and facts of life and the best of times and eventually came home and married and got to have my three wonderful kids. So I always look at, you know, again, attitude of gratitude, people, see? Oh, Hope, you are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I think you're beautiful on the inside as well. Okay, what else we got here, guys? Let's see. Oh, this actually is a good one. Did I ever watch the original Mickey Mouse Club? Okay, so confession? No, I never did. I really didn't watch a lot of TV. I was doing my schoolwork and doing a lot of dancing and um, actually did some pageants when I was younger back here in St. Louis. I mainly watched, if anything, big musical movies. Loved, loved Singing in the Rain. Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Oh, that's what I dreamed of being. Someday being in a musical and being Singing in the Rain. So when like La La Land came out, I was like, shoot, see? Born either too early or too late. Um, but what was really cool is when we were at, on the Disney um, studio lot, Dick Van Dyke came on. Oh, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. So we got to meet Dick Van Dyke. And when I was a little girl, all I ever wanted to do actually was also be Julie Andrews. So Sound of Music, and of course Mary Poppins. And actually when we did then that number, we did a, a, a version of Step in Time. And that was so cool because we got to wear some of those costumes. We got to wear some of the Mary Poppins I, um, dresses. That was simply amazing. And when I actually went to school at UCLA, I actually got to meet Gene Kelly. So that was like another dream come true. Hey, Emily. Aw, thanks. I appreciate that, Emily. She says, I think you're great. Well, I appreciate that. Okay. What else, guys? Hi, Colin. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Someone's bold enough to ask, as part of the Disney family, do I get any special perks or privileges in the park? Shh. Yes. Can't push it too much, but yes, I do. Actually, it was kind of funny. Um, Christian, my youngest, so I, I might as well take a break here and say, so I have three amazing children. Patrick, who is engaged to Shannon, 
who I adore, my daughter Jacqueline, who has been married over a year now to Blake, and they live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, roll tide, and then my youngest Christian, who out of all of them decided to kind of follow in Mama's footsteps, and he's actually in Book of Mormon on Broadway, and actually I went down to Texas, he had a little break, it was in the show Grease, um, but um, anyway, okay, I'm talking about my kids, you guys, and I, oh, so as a senior in high school, Christian, now, this is what's kind of crazy, because seniors in high school, most of them for spring break, want to go to Florida, get crazy, Cancun. No, Christian just wanted to go to Disney World with me. And so a couple other friends went with us. So kind of called in my favors then, and it was a blast. So, yeah, we kind of get to go behind the scenes. There's special ways to get into the rides. And I have to tell you guys, that was just a surreal experience, because I was with him in Disney World about the time that I was doing those, you know, summer shows and visiting, and that was just kind of weird. Because in my head, I keep thinking I'm still like 18 or 21. I don't know, go figure that. So, um, it was really fun though, to be with him at Disney World. Okay. Oh, good question. Somebody asked about Molly Ringwald because yes, she did appear on Showtime Day uh, on our Friday shows, which guys, I have to tell you, that was like my favorite time because I go back to my live theater. I love being in front of an audience and we'd have those special guest people come on and we got to kind of perform with them. That was great. I'm looking, oh wait, Heidi was the Little Red Trail. Oh yes, actually they did have, she's asking about the Little Red Trailer that we had for our schoolhouse. Yes, it's there, but not right where it was. And now when you go back and look at it, it seems a lot smaller. You know, everything is bigger when you're little, but when you go back, it's, it, it, it doesn't look that big. It was kind of funny that 12 of us fit into that little trailer. Um, but anyway, with Molly, so yes, when she came on the Facts of Life when we met for the first time, well, and because Lisa too, it was kind of crazy because, you know, she had grown up since when we last saw her and obviously we had to. But that was kind of fun all to be together again. Hey, John. Yes. Yes. Christian has been in the Book of Mormon on Broadway and he's loving every minute of it. And actually, I'm going to brag here as a little parent. He just was offered. He is going to be actually the dance captain, captain in charge of the whole Book of Mormon tour. So he's actually there right now. He's got one more week on Broadway, and then he packs up his bags and goes on tour, traveling all around the world. So check to see if the tour's coming to your town, and then you can see my boy. And who knows, I may just be there because I've got to take some side trips and always catch up with him. But so he's going to be in charge of the whole show. So I'm kind of proud of that. Oh, and you know, come to think about it, can you guys see my, my scarf? This is a treasure. So um, this is one of Charlotte Ray's scarves. When I went out there for her funeral, um, she always wore scarves and loved them. And so they had a bunch of hat boxes of the scarves. And as we came into the ceremony, they said we could pick one. So I picked her leopard one. And so whenever I wear it, it it's, it's just really neat. Kind of a big, cozy, warm hug from Charlotte Ray. Hi, Deborah. Oh, gosh, you, you guys, your questions are going so fast. Um, trying to see, oh, about um, Broadway. Yes, I already talked about that. Um, okay, can't see that one. All right, we'll keep talking, though. Keep sending them in, all right, guys? I'm trying to do this. Like I said, I'm new to this. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, some of you want to, oh, all eight of you girls were great on Facts Life. Oh, thanks, Emily. Appreciate that. Um, so my audition, some of you guys want to know about my audition to get into the Mickey Mouse Club. Okay, so this is kind of fun um, because the last time I was out in L.A., I met up with Noreen, who was our actual choreographer on the show, and she shared some little tidbits with me. So the audition, what I did is Disney went on this big nationwide search, and my actual mentor dance teacher read about it and just sent in my picture and resume. So they weren't coming to St. Louis, they were coming to Chicago. So. What um, we did is they said, come up, we'd love to see you in Chicago. So I went up there to audition. And this was so funny because I didn't think anything of it. So I go into the room and um, I met with the two casting people that were there. And it was this big, huge room. So I come in and, and they're sitting over here and my chair's like way on the other side. So I just walk in the room and you gotta remember, I'm 12 years old. I pick up the chair and I bring it and sit it right next side to them because we're gonna have a conversation, I thought. And I just plopped myself right down. So they just thought that was hysterical. So when I left, they kind of stuck their head out and called my mentor over and they just said, wow, she is like a pistol. So they told me that later. So then go back to good old St. Louis. We drove back and um, didn't hear anything for about two or three weeks. For me, the only thing I was hoping for was maybe, maybe get to be a guest spot, you know, an honorary musketeer on the Friday shows. So then I think it was about three weeks later, 
I get a call and they said, you need to go to your local TV station. We want to film you on video. So I went to um, our local TV station and I get in there. And so, sorry, I'm going to hear there, guys. So when I get into the local TV station, they're going to like interview and talk with me. And they said, just, you know, we're just going to interview. I'm like, okay. So they sit down and we're talking and chatting. And they go, hey, Julie, do you want a banana? banana? I go, oh, do you have some? And they pretend like to hand, hand me a banana. And I go, oh. And I go to take it. And I said, well, wait, is, is it a Chiquita or a Dole? And then they said, I can't remember what they said. And I took it and I started peeling it. And I was eating it while I was talking. Well, what I didn't know is afterwards, they were like so excited in the, in the video room, the people filming me. They're like, oh my God, she did great. Um, Disney Studios was trying to see if we, if we could, you know, improv and pretend and look at something though it wasn't there because obviously eventually that's what we, we would have to do with Mickey, you know, because they have a special screen called the, called the chroma key screen. So they just wanted to see if like we could pretend to do that. So I did that. I passed with flying colors and about two weeks later they called and said, I got the whole thing. And the funniest thing I do remember this scene was um, my dad, my mom looking at him going, well, honey, what, 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 are, what are we going to do? And he's like, what do you mean what are we going to do? She got it. She's got to go. If, if God's given her this talent, you got to go. So, yes, I had some great, great parents. And I'm sad to say they're not with me any longer. I think about them a lot, especially when my kids do amazing things. But, um, yeah, so thanks to both of them, you know, I was able to do some wonderful things and uh, was raised really well. All right, who's there? Scott, hey, who's out there, Todd? Hey, Todd. Um, what else has we got here? Oh, someone, okay, asked a question about releasing a second album. Like, it, it, was there ever talk about that? As far as I know, not. Hi, Tom, hi, Vicki. Um, as, as, as far as I know, no, there wasn't gonna be a second album. Um, oh, but they wanna know if we were gonna do it, what songs would have been on there? Okay, so do you guys remember the song? River country, big river country, it's a hoot, it's a holler. Okay, anyway, <laughs> that one I think would have been on the show, on the record album, and maybe the disco mouse, because that came out as our solo little, do you guys remember 45s? Yeah, that maybe would have been on the album as well. And I bet you they probably would have maybe done some of our solo songs. Oh, Matt, thank you so much. I, I kind of have changed, let me tell you. <laughs> a little here, a little here. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for saying that. Um, ooh, so which of the Mouseketeers was I closest to? I'm going to have to say Nita. Nita and I just had this great bond because of the dancing. And um, she was younger, so she was kind of like a little sister to me. And um, and like I said, Curtis. I think we all kind of had secretly crushes on Curtis because he was just so cute and um just fun and he was a great dancer out of all the boys and then but like I said Todd eventually like we've stayed in touch with the most hi Deborah, how you doing um, okay let's see what else okay and one of the qu other questions here is it says talk about my family and my work at variety so actually guys I'm here this is my office here I don't care I'll show you see of course there's my kids sitting all around me on the balcony over there I'm not balcony the windowsill and, um, okay, now let me see if I get this back so I don't knock it over. There we go. So I'm here at work. And so Variety is the children's charity of St. Louis. And so what our mission is, we work with children from birth to 21 who have mental and physical disabilities. And that can be anywhere on the spectrum with um, maybe autism or Asperger's, brittle bone disease, all the way up to like cerebral palsy and, you know, some really, really intense um challenges for these kids so I'm the director of events so that's part of the fundraising so I plan different events um, like some people might know golf tournament or we're having a big fashion show coming up and also we have not dancing with the stars but dinner with the stars and our big guest our headliner is sting yes we are so excited about that so we have these events and then within the event we'll have a silent auction or a live auction and um, or kind of just a fund and need appeal and then we raise money that way um so no I, um wait which painting actually yes i did paint that i planned a little staff get together and it's called um painting with a twist and the twist is you have a little glass of wine while you paint so yeah she's talking about that lovely painting over there glad you noticed it deborah thank you okay um so 
the, the neat story about variety is, is my kids were actually involved with it because they would sing with the kids on the telethon. Now there's no longer a telethon. That's like way, way old. Then I got involved and then Christian, they started doing this big, um, theater program here it's now in its 11th year but christian did the very first one it was tom sawyer and he got to play tom so if you guys ever look at christian's facebook page or see him on instagram if you ever see there's a couple of girls it's gracie and then there's megan and um caitlin caitlin um has um down um down syndrome and um Gracie has cerebral palsy, and megan has i'm not sure what megan is she's not as severe but anyway those girls we've known for ever and um they came up to see christian in book of mormon and you guys they actually are inspiration to them and their parents it's amazing so that's what i do at variety i love it there's some days that it's kind of crazy because believe it or not i don't like sitting behind a desk like with the computer and doing all that i'd rather be like talking to you guys or being out there and doing things so but i but i, I do love it because i i hope i'm making a difference um let's see kiddos so Patrick is 29. How can that be when I'm only 30? But it's true. And he's in his third year of five-year residency. Hey, John. Hi. Anastasia. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. Um, wait, Colin, what do you say? I gotta, I'm got. i waiting for something to move here. I can't read. My mom was... Uh, I can't see it, Colin. Okay. Um, but Patrick, anyway, he's in his third year, five year residency. He's actually a urologist, and I'm very proud of him. And he's engaged, and the wedding's going to be in September, so we're kind of planning all that. Jacqueline went down to school at Alabama for gymnastics. Like, they're the number one school for gymnastics. But God love her. Unfortunately, her injury came back, and she never really got to compete. But we know why she went there because God had a plan, and she met her husband, Blake, who's I love him. He's adorable and so good for her. So Jack went on to Emory for graduate school, and she's a doctor of physical therapy. Ha, huh, get it, gymnast. She did a lot of physical therapy herself, so it's a perfect fit. But I'm actually, she's going to be going into pediatric physical therapy, into peds, um, which means she's actually going to be working with a lot of the kids that, like, I have here at Variety, um, which can be, okay, is that good? Which could be kind of pretty intense. Um, hi, Tom. Um, so it could be kind of intense uh, for her, I think, but she said she can handle it, and the kids and their parents are going to be inspirations. And her husband is a physician's assistant, and um, so they live in Tuscaloosa, Roll Tide. I feel like whenever I say that, I have to say Roll Tide. And um, I do love going down there and visiting them, and they're very happy. And then there's Mr. Christian. So went to Yale, graduated from, graduated from Yale. He got to do that whole big tour with the whiff and poofs and went to like 20 different countries. Okay, countries, like every three days he was in a totally different country, different culture, crazy. Patrick and I got to go visit him um, on two different trips. Anyway, and so he's been working ever since and now he's in Book of Mormon. He actually was up for Dear Evan Hansen. They actually brought him in five different times for that part. And um, it's very interesting because I told Christian, if you're going to show business, you gotta have thick skin you know, and, and just do your best. And if you don't get picked, you gotta let it go. And he's really good at that. And the Dear and Hanson people really loved him, but they just felt like, how'd they say it? Like, he just has this charm and, and, and this energy. And they said, he can't really hide that. It's not about his acting, it's just about who he is as a person. And he said, you know, Dear Evan Hansen, the character is supposed to be a little bit more like reserved and really shy. So that's okay. He's in Book of Mormon, having a blast doing that. Um, Okay, all I know of Wolf and Poofs, I know from Gilmore. Yes! Christian, we love Gilmore girls. Girls, Yes, so Wiff and Poofs, go Google it. They are the oldest a cappella group, I think I'm going to say in the world, I think. Um, and they're the ones that wear the tails um, and, and the white bow ties and everything. And um, it's very prestigious. And um, what's really cool um, is, like, there's only 14 picked each year. And then once you're Wiff and Poof, you're always a Wiff and Poof. And there, I will tell you this too, at, up at Yale, there are those secret societies. And the one Christian was in was really cool. And you get to sit in special chairs. And it's really neat because it's history and tradition. And he was in the one, which I love, Cole Porter was in. And he actually got to sit in Cole Porter's chair. So he loved that. Thought he had died and gone to heaven. So that was really cool. What well, you guys, 
Oh, yes, the bare necessity. Look for the bare necessities. Yes, I do love that one. See, the memory's going. That was fun. I have to tell you, though, that was done in a junkyard. And then, which was fine, but then my solo song, I turned around and did it in that same junkyard. My solo song was supposed to be done out on location at a beach, and there was supposed to end up being three of me, one on the ocean, one dancing on a rock, one on the sand. And I forget what happened, but they had to get something like as they call it, in the can fast, time was wasting. So they're like, Julie, we know you can change, you can, you can fake this, you can be flexible and adapt. So I sang that lovely, beautiful song in the junkyard that we had just done Bare Necessities in. Is that crazy? Yes, I know, I know it is. Um, trying to think what else I should say here, guys. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I'll touch just a little bit upon it, just for any of you that are going through this. Hey, Kathy. Um, just to share, because I always believe, for me, my faith is really important to me, and I think that's kept me really grounded and, and strong and who I am, and, and my kids as well. Um, so just a little bit about, um, personally, yes, I um, ended up having a divorce. It was not by my choice in the sense that I really worked hard on trying to save it. Um, I wanted to walk it as a great role model for my kiddos, so I... Um, after 30 years of marriage, I didn't want to just throw things away. It took a long time, though, for my heart to heal and to forgive for betrayals and, and lies and things. Um, but I thought, no, I made these vows. I can walk the walk. I can do it. And so probably for about five years, I really tried back and forth, back and forth. And without getting into too much details, um, it takes two people willing to work and be in a partnership and, and do the work. And um, I just, he kind of chose not to. And... Um, so at some point I had to decide, actually it was my three kids who said, Mom, you need to move on. You deserve more and it's not the same person that's there. And as much as my heart broke on that, um, I chose to do that. And you know, God is so good because I've ended up meeting some amazing people. I met a wonderful woman in my divorce care group and we actually started this um, book study and people, you need to get it. The woman's version is called Captivating. Oh, it's so incredible. And for the guys out there, it's called Wild at Heart. I recommend you guys read it. And if you're married, each read it and then switch and pass it on to the other one. Okay? Because it's really, really good. Hey, Kurt. How are you, Kurt? Aw, oh, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate that. But like I said, um, grateful and just keeping positive and looking at all the good that came out of it. Um, and, and if I can talk to other people and uplift them. Um, my biggest thing is when people are like, oh, great, and they want to celebrate and have a big party when you're divorced. I was like, no, I'm never going to celebrate a divorce because I don't think it's a celebration, but it's a fact, and it happened, and then you move on. But like I said, the biggest thing was I wanted to show my kids about forgiveness and not be bitter and um, just being a good role model, model and um, kind of how to walk through things in life, if that makes sense. And I think it was hard because both Patrick and Jacqueline were in serious relationships at the time. So it was hard for them because they didn't understand, you know, what was kind of going on. Why? Why would you walk away? Um, why he walked away. But it's all good. It's okay. Um, oh, Donna, you've read those books? Yes, you read? Yeah. Captivating Guys, I really recommend it. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Um, all right, guys, let's, let's see. Whatever. I'll send me some questions. What else do you have to ask me about? Um... Oh, I can tell you about a little bit of the things that I would love to do, what I'm looking forward to, as much as I love my job here. There's actually a variety out in L.A. I checked that out. Um, I think what I would really love to do is get involved with Pure Flix. If you guys haven't heard about it, look it up. It's like Netflix, but it's called Pure Flix. And it's faith-based, wholesome family movies, TV series. So I would really love to get involved with that. Aw, uh, Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. I know you guys are right there behind me. And you know what? I always take prayers. Love prayers. It's amazing what that can do for you and lift your spirits up. So thanks, Tom, for saying that. Um, all right, Scott, I can't see. Did you keep anything from the show? Oh, um, you know, here's the deal. When we found out the show was canceled, I was back in St. Louis. It's not like, kind of like you're at your job and they say, hey, you're, you know, you're, you're done. It's time to leave and you can pack up your belongings and, and, and go. I was actually in St. Louis, I remember, on the Muni rehearsal stage. I was rehearsing, um, what was it? I think it was Meet Me in St. Louis is what I was rehearsing. And they were going to come film it. And the next thing you know, a week later, I find out the show's canceled. So I didn't like it to kind of go, even if I wanted to kind of 
take a couple little things and think they were my little treasures. No, I really didn't. All I got was that sweatsuit. Oh, my pigtails. Yes, my little pigtails and my bows. What was funny is I did that for one of the pictures, and then it was like, well, now I had to do that. I had to be Julie with the pigtails. Um, so that was kind of funny. Bittersweet, but at least, like you said, it did stand out. It let everybody know there's, there's Mouseketeer Julie. Oh, I can tell you another funny story. So, first of all, I loved meeting any fan, anybody that came up, came up after the Disneyland shows all the time. I always loved meeting all of you guys if you're out there. Those of you that came to the show um, loved meeting you, loved hearing you scream and cheer. And it was so fun when we ever got to go out in the audience for friends and pick one of you guys to come up with us. Loved that part of it. Um, but I remember signing my very first autograph. I think this was at Disney Studios and we would come out and sometimes there would be people waiting, waiting out in the parking lot. And um, so I signed my name. I think I did love and joy Julie. And then I signed my eye with a flower. And the reason why I did the flower is my dear mentor, who um, I look, you know, just look up to and helped me with my dance training and just, well, actually we're just, we're, we're still close now. She's like an aunt to me um, or my surrogate mother since my mom passed away or an older sister. I shouldn't say mother. She probably wouldn't like that. But um, anyway, she always signed her name with a flower. So I thought I was gonna kind of do that out of respect for her. And then I kind of would do a couple more, and then I thought, oh, my gosh, this is taking too long. So then the next one, like, I didn't put my flower on. And they came back and go, oh, you didn't put your flower. You have to put your flower. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? So that's what I had to do from now on. Kind of with the pigtails, I also had to sign everything with a flower. <laughs> um, all right, Steven, what you got? I have one of those. What do you have as things are rolling through? All, all your musketeers, yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, you guys were great. I mean, you know what? Here's the thing that's really interesting, what I would say. When people are involved in show business, and um, like I try to do with my kids, just anybody, any of my kids, whether they're in the show business or not, I try to keep them humble and to say, you know, remember where your gifts come from, and you need to use them for good things. And if not, they can easily be taken away. So use them well, but remember to be humble. When celebrities or stars, you know, start, I think, losing track of reality and um you know and they start not wanting to talk to their fans it's it's like you guys it's because of you all and your support and watching shows and loving what we do that's why we get to do what we do and have a job so that's the biggest thing and um i loved it because christian um when he's out on broadway and book of mormon whenever he comes out the backstage door not all of them come out because some of them have been doing the show forever but he comes out and he will say like hi to a friend that's been there but he'll say wait and he starts at one end and then goes across the whole way signing every single person's autograph because he remembered the one time when he went to new york to see what was it I'm trying to think maybe it was in wicked and he went to see somebody i know i don't think it was wicked i can't remember what show it was and they said i don't do autographs he was crushed so he remembered what that felt like and i told him so just remember that and don't treat everybody the same and don't forget to do that. Watch Ronnie's show, wonderful, what was this? No, wait. What about the fan clubs, okay? Fan clubs as in, um, this is hard, you guys. I'm trying, wait, a wonderful world of Disney a few months ago. Wait, watch the Ronnie show, wonderful world of Disney a few months ago. Okay, you're doing TV shows. Okay, Heidi, I'm gonna wait for yours to come up. You guys, I gotta get practice at this. I can talk fast, but this is not scrolling as fast as I'd like it to. Um, oh, I have a funny story to tell you too. There was a number I did that was toe shoes. It was like I was a jockey and I had to jump over these hurdles. So for those of you that don't know about dancing and toe shoes, you're dancing um, in um, like the toe of the shoe, the toe shoe, the toe part. It's actually, it's very hard. It's not really wood, but it's very hard. Um, substance and then you have to wear like lambs wool on to protect your toes anyway so I was doing this dance and people just um, after I filmed I think I did it three times and then they're like we need to do one more angle can you do it again at this point there was literally blood coming through my toe shoe and I remember the choreographer Noreen sitting there going can you do it one more time Julie come on come on so I got up and did it again I, I literally was like smiling through my tears because it hurt so bad because I had to do this thing where you could, like hop up and down on your toe it was like ow 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 so, yes, I took one for the team on that one. <laughs> um, someone asked if being out in Hollywood, if I was comfortable 
out there because it's a harsh place. So it's really interesting. Um, because I'm going to say yes, but I, I really say the reason why is because of my upbringing and my schooling. I, um, going to school, I was blessed to go to a, a private Catholic school for me. So I had the nuns and, um, and then my parents are just really good, faithful people. And they, you know, would remind me I had gifts and I had special talents, but they were always really good about keeping me focused and keeping me grounded. They weren't afraid to, you know, come up and say, hey, you know, stop doing that discipline, you know, discipline me, things like that. So I think because of that, I was able to, you know, stay strong and, and not be tempted with a lot of things and all the, quote, bad stuff that's out there. You know, I look at people today, like, you know, that, the, the craziness that happened to poor Britney Spears, you know, with cutting her hair and shaving it all off, or maybe the Lindsay Lohans of the world. Some of it I wonder is, you know, if you surround yourself with all the yes people, you know, they just keep saying, yes, what do you want? Yes. And you, you've got to have somebody next to you, whether it's your mom, a sister, a brother, or some true friend that will look you in the eye and say, knock it off. Are you crazy? I mean... I think that's the biggest problem. If you start keeping yourself with people, you know, that they're afraid to lose their job so they don't want to go against you and, and, and say something's wrong, so they just say yes, then I think it just spirals out of control. So that, that's kind of what I feel, and I, hopefully I've raised that and instilled that in all three of my kids, and, and I think I have so far. Um, let's see. Oh, Kurt, thank you. Kurt said my mom was a great person. Yes, and you know what? I... I um, I miss her dearly, and my dad was great too. I lost him at fi when he was 56 years old, and then just my mom in the last 11 years. Um, yeah, she was really great, and she gave up a lot because my mom and dad, that's kind of a funny story, you know, happily married, but yet she came out to live with me, so I would at least have a parent. Um, a couple of the girls actually had some, quote, younger nannies with them, and that probably didn't go real well. Um, but my mom was with me, and then I had my older sister, Jennifer, who was home with my dad, and actually my grandma, my mom's mom, was there. And um, so I was really lucky to have her, and I didn't get it till you know, when I was married, you know, what, you know, the separation they had. Um, but, you know, back then it was kind of funny. We had tel just telephones, guys, not cell phones, not the email thing. And so she wrote a lot. And I remember going and buying an anniversary card, but I bought two of the same kind. And the lady's like, honey, why are you buying two of the same kind? I was said, well, one's for my mom and my dad. And she's like, well, so are they not together? I'm like, oh, no, they love each other. They're married. They're just not in the same state for right now. So that was kind of funny. Um, I just remember that happening for sure. Okay, bye, Kevin. Thanks for tuning in. Go charge your phone. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think anything else. Um... This is all Mickey Mouse stuff. Uh, you know what I, I would love to do is, um, I think what I'm looking into doing possibly is there's the D23 big fan club um, for anybody and any everything and anything Disney. And they have a big convention in August. So when I was out in California this last time visiting um, my one friend Terry, who came out to visit me when I was younger and decided to stay and never leave Disneyland, um, that's why I go to visit when I'm down there in Anaheim. Anyway, her and um, one of her friends, Kevin or whatever, they're involved in this. And so maybe I'm going to see if I could maybe go and make an appearance there, which would be so much fun. And um, um, get to experience a little more Disney. And I'm not sure if it takes place in L.A. or not. But I have to check and see. Yes, Tom, right. D23 is in August. All right, Darren, how was your experience with John? Is that I bet you that was John Ritter, because um, I couldn't see the last name. Okay, so that was so much fun, you guys. John Ritter, oh my gosh, he was, he was a genius. He really was. And a lot of that stuff was improv, and, and he ad-libbed, which I love, because then I kind of just went along with it, and the more I was going like, for sure, then he was going, well, for sure, for sure. And it was, it was just so much fun. It, it was great. Um, and, uh, um, it's just sad that we uh, kind of don't have him around anymore. You know, before, um, well, after Mickey Mouse Club, when I came back and before I had gotten married, I was back in St. Louis for a year during my engagement. I actually was an entertainment reporter for a local TV station, and I got to go on these movie junkets, junkets and stuff and interview different people. So that was kind of fun. Instead of being interviewed, I was the interviewer. I interviewed Steven Spielberg, Oprah Winfrey, 
But the craziest one is I um, um, hi constable, great, to, um, glad you're joining. Um, um, Robin Williams. I got to interview Robin Williams. Okay, you guys. So I'm talking to him. What movie was it for? I can't remember what movie he had just done. Um, did you do, was it Dr. Patch or Patches or something like that? Okay, I'm not sure which one. Anyway, I was interviewing him and talking with him, and he actually was very serious, partly because I didn't give him anything to go with. And I thought, okay, is this is this interview dying? Because he's not being Robin crazy, you know, crazy Robin Williams here. And then, I don't know, I said or did something, and then I gave it. I gave him something, a gimmick, something, and he took it, and then he went with it. He, like, jumped up on his chair, and it was insane to watch him transform. But, I mean, he definitely, though, has this other side that's a serious side. Um, wait, where is all that cool footage? Um, oh, well, it's in my basement at home. <laughs> um, it actually was on big, you know, like, three-quarter-inch tape, because that's what the big... Uh, TV stations, uh, the news stations used, and then I just had it transferred to VHS, and now I guess I got to transfer it to uh, CDs or DVDs. Um, a lot of people also asked me about my kids when they were little growing up, and you know, the way I guess um, they grew up is I did put in um, back then it was the sing along Disney tapes videos so when maybe I was like taking care of one and putting one down for a nap or nursing them then I would put the videotape in they would do sing alongs and then at one point somebody came over and said hey Julie um, I'd love to see one of your shows like the Mickey Mouse show or the facts of life you got one of those and so I said sure and I went to put it in and the kids were watching and they watched it, it was great and then at some point they go okay this is great mom I think it might have been Christian because he was the youngest he goes but um can we please watch Spongebob now? I was like, oh, oh, kiss a death. They want to watch Spongebob instead of their mother. But actually, it was kind of funny. Um, so I don't think they really got it until, when was it? It was, we were somewhere. And so, I don't know if we like grocery shopping or something. And someone actually recognized it was more my voice than anything and came up. And they actually said from the Mickey Mouse Club. And my kids were like, oh, what? You recognize her because of her voice? So I was like, oh, yes, see there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they didn't really watch a lot of the tapes too much, which maybe is a little bit of the reason why I just really would love to probably get back into the business again. So everybody keep fingers crossed, say little prayers and stuff, because I would, like I said, would love to do those faith-based films. I'd love to get into the Hallmark Channel. Um, some of you might think they're corny. Oh my gosh, Christmas is not Christmas for me unless I'm watching a Hallmark Channel for sure. No, I did not meet Heidi. I didn't meet Jack Klugman. No, which is kind of a bummer because I actually loved him. And watching him on um, uh, The Odd Couple. I watched that with my dad when I was younger growing up. So no, I didn't get to meet him at all. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking to do that. I'm still hoping. I worked with your friend Terry. Steven, did I meet you? Did I ever meet you? Okay. Oh, Tom, Survivor. Okay, or Amazing Race. So that's a funny question, Tom. I wouldn't do Survivor, partly because um, I just don't really know if I could play the game and, 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 and deceive people and stuff. I just don't know if that would sit well with me. But Amazing Race, oh, so would do Amazing Race. I've talked about I think Christian and I should do it. And um, Patrick and Jacqueline said, oh, that would be awesome because the two of you would make great footage because I'm sure he would like antagonize me we're both the same I mean we're so much alike we'd be like fighting with each other you know what I'm saying and he would say something to me and he knows I wouldn't respond or get upset because I'd be like oh we're on TV and I have to look like a good mom so I'm sure it would be hysterical and great footage to watch but I would so do the amazing race love love that show um and I could do like skydiving and I could do I don't really want to do the bungee jumping thing but I could do it I just don't know about eating weird things I don't know if I could do that I may I may gag in that wait Colin I live in Hallmark country wait oh Canada is that most of where they're all filmed are they mostly filmed in Canada Colin somebody just told me that the other day I thought they were literally filmed in different places well I would gladly come to Canada to be in a Hallmark commercial um Trying to think. Oh, Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Oh, you guys. I, w I would just love to do Dancing with the Stars. And I wouldn't do it unless I thought I could keep up. But like I said, I stay in shape, got the dancing going on. So I'm really trying to approach it. They've never had 
a mouse keteer on the show. Um, so they had Kim because of Facts of Life, and then I, and they had Nancy as well. So mine would be more that they've never had a mouse keteer, and it's an ABC show, and ABC now is part of Disney. So that's kind of my um, my angle. Yeah, I know eating, sur doing Survivor, you totally have to eat weird things, isn't that where you have to bid and you sight and see and get money, and and you have to do the. It's almost like the Fear Factor. Do you remember that show too? Yeah, I would not do Survivor because of doing that. Um, and I probably would give up standing on one of those little tiny poles, you know, holding on. I do not have a lot of upper arm strength, which is why I do try to work out with my weights. You went um, skydiving? Who did? I just saw somebody said they went skydiving. What I do? Celebrity Big Brother. Okay, so guys, okay, I, 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 I can't watch that show. Okay, I, I can't watch that. The, the, Desperate Housewives. I watched it, the Atlanta one only because Kimmy was on it. God love her. I love her to death and watched it. But I don't know. I just can't do that kind of stuff just because I feel like, I don't know if it's how, I don't know. Part of me doesn't think it's that real is real. I mean, I think, I mean, it is, but I'm sure they try to tell them, hey, act a little crazier. Maybe they give them more money. I don't know. But I, I don't, I don't sit there and, and watch that kind of stuff. Um, Oh, hi, Richard. Um, yes, I do keep in touch with the other Mouseketeers. It's mainly Todd. Just got back in touch with Lisa. I'm, and not Lisa, um, Kelly. And then actually, Lisa and I have been talking. Um, oh, oh my gosh. And then when I went out to L.A. this last time, had so much fun, met up with Mindy. And, oh my God, we had a great time. We just walked all along um, Santa Monica area there overlooking the ocean and just laughed. It was so great to see her. I was trying to meet up with Todd, but he was really sick at that time. Um, there was something going around. But um, I usually do meet up with him. Oh, something else I forgot to tell you was, so Noreen, the choreographer from the Mickey Mouse Club. Okay, so what she told me was, so, you know, we do a videotape of ourselves with our dancing and our singing and then that other um, banana improv thing that I did. So she said they brought her in and because um, they wanted somebody young. She was pretty young. Like, I think she was only 19, but they wanted somebody hip. Yeah, I said hip. To my kids, yes, I said the word hip. Not cool, hip. Anyway, and so they wanted somebody that was really new and up and coming and, you know, could make the show fresh and young. And she said that I was the first one she picked and wanted because she saw my dancing ability. But she was worried because they also said they didn't want people that were too slick and polished and too good. They wanted a little bit of some... You know, just all American, which she thought was crazy because that's really what I was. I just had a lot of dancing ability. So she said she actually took my video and kind of like chopped it up a little bit here and there or whatever. So it didn't look so perfect. So I kind of love that story. And, um, and Noreen is great, the choreographer from there, because um, she has a big dance studio now. And her dance studio sometimes, I think, gets rented out by some of the Dancing with the Stars people. Wait, how is Kelly, Mindy? Oh, Kelly. So Kelly, we've only touched base a little bit. We tried to see each other this last time I was in L.A., but she was down, way down somewhere in San Diego, I think, with her sister. And little, little Mindy, Nita, I don't keep in touch. I don't, haven't seen any of those people. No, Richard, I haven't talked about the Super Bowl appearance. What do you want to know? Um, that was a while ago in my memory, but um, it was amazing. It's so funny because when they make these big deal of these Super Bowl, you know, intermission, I'm not intermission, oh my gosh, halftime shows. And then you go back to the one we did and it was Kids of the Kingdom, you know, going Mickey Mouse and big cheers and stuff and not all these big explosions and things. And now you see all this stuff they go through. Wow. It's really kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, I guess that's maybe when I feel a little bit old. Have I talked to, um, Steven, you want to know if I've talked to Allison? No, I haven't. And I loved Allison, you guys. She was so talented. Um, I'm reading some of these as go, okay. Um, uh, Allison was so talented with her piano and, and, and playing. And again, like that next whole year, we were really all going to do some of this other, these other great, crazy, um, like, on location things. And I know they had talked about something with Allison and playing the piano. Shantae, no. I have not seen or talked to Shantae in so long. And I think the last time we had the big Mickey Mouse reunion, I can't remember what was going on. I don't know if it was work or maybe I was having a baby. I'm not sure. Now, somebody asked a question, what it, what it was like a week on the set. And I'm assuming that's for Mickey Mouse Club. 
So what was interesting with Mickey Mouse Club versus like a show like Facts of Life. Facts of Life was four days of rehearsal with the script and they tweak it and change up the jokes and do different things. But then um, on the last day on Friday, that's when the only time you would tape in front of the audience. We did two shows. Um, we'd tape the first one and just go run through it real quick. Then we'd eat dinner and the second show we would tape again. And that one they would stop but they had to do retakes. Mickey Mouse Club, and that was also video. Mickey Mouse Club was filmed. And, um, well actually I take that back. Some of it was filmed, some of it was video. We did something every single day. And looking back now, it was a huge compliment to me. What they did to me was, I'll never forget, um, several times when I was learning a new, my like a solo dance number or, or, or something, they would teach it to me and in two hours, turn around and say, okay, Julie, we're filming you now. We've got time, we're sticking you in and filming. It was like, wait, what, what, what? But I loved it, I love working, keeping excited, you know, and, and doing things kind of spontaneously where a lot of the other kids got a little bit more time. Like on Monday, they would know on Friday, that's when they're gonna shoot their number. So it was kind of interesting, but no, every single day. So you would come in and drive on the Disney lot. And you guys, I do have to tell you that. So I'm coming from St. Louis and my mom and I are driving in to California. I'd never been to California. Actually, what's really funny is my, I'm trying to think, had I been? My mom and I, I was 13 at the time and my mom, God love her, I think she was in her forties, had never even been on an airplane. Okay, had never been on an airplane. And, um, cause usually we would just drive everywhere. So we take the airplane, seeing Hollywood and California, and then driving on that Disney studio lot, you guys. It was, it was so crazy. I'm trying to read as questions go by here. Um, just, I mean, it said Walt Disney Studios. And, and to think I'm just like, gonna be a part of this now. It, it's, it's crazy. Um, um, but I, oh my gosh, I forgot what I was going to say, you guys, because I'm trying to read your questions. Okay. Um, anyway, but going on to the lot and um, just being a part of the Disney family and walking in. Anyway, so it, it was just really cool. So you pull in maybe 8 a.m. and you go in. You always had to sign your name in. And then we'd go to the little red trailer that I think Heidi brought up. And that was our school, our schoolhouse. And you had to get three to four hours in of school every day. So what was tricky is sometimes you'd go on the set and they go, oh, we have a good 20 minutes before we can do this. Go back to school. Well, by the time you get back to school, sit down, calm everybody down, open your books, 20 minutes was up. They still counted it as school time, let me tell you. Um, but imagine there's 12 of us and we were all different grade, um, grade levels for the most part. So for me, and again, no cell phones, no emails, it's called, you know, snail mail and a phone with a long cord on it a cord on it i for the most part we were tutored but i almost kind of like want to say I tutored myself um i would call the teachers and the nuns and then before, when i would come home they would give me work to take back for the next month which was such a blessing to them and, and you know and to doing that for me i mean i i kind of put them out to do that but they were gracious to do it and then i remember coming back at like Christmas Eve and Easter breaks and things and I would be taking exams and midterms. So it was kind of crazy. But but basically math, I mean, as long as you have the math book, math is kind of easy, it's kind of black and white. Wait, tell us about meeting Jodie Foster and Annette. Okay, we'll do that in a sec. Um, so that was just kind of crazy. So I taught myself, the thing I probably missed out on the most was history because that I probably just memorized to take the test. But instead of being a classroom and somebody teaching you, you know. But anyway, so we'd go to school, you'd be pulled out to go do something on the set, then you'd go back, then we'd go eat lunch at the commissary, and if anybody was around that day, Kim Richards from Escape to Witch Mountain, or Jodie Foster, or whoever was out um, that day on the back lot filming things, then you would see them at the commissary, which is the, the big lunch area. Um, and then they did have like a little fun Disney store that was cool there. And then we would come back, do more filming, and usually our day ended by about four. And we would get either a script to take home for that week to kind of go over our parts, and you would always have a schedule for what was going on that day. I heard Allison audition for The Facts of Life. Is that true? Stephen, I have to tell you, I've heard that too, and I have no idea if that was true or not. Do not know that at all. I know Helen Hunt auditioned for one of the parts, and she ended up not getting it, but eventually she ended up being a guest spot on the show. But I thought that was kind of funny. And Helen and I had worked on a couple ABC After School specials, and Nita actually was in with one of those with us, too. That was kind of fun to do together. Um, so, oh, meeting Annette Funicello. 
okay, so guys, that actually was really cool. And it was more, it was more from the fact of, like I said, I didn't really watch the original Mickey Mouse Club. It was more from once I was on the Disney lot and kind of heard the history and, you know, the making of the Mickey Mouse Club and Disneyland opening and Disney World, then it, it was just really amazing to meet her. And we got to sing and dance with her. It was so cool. Do I remember Shakey's Pizza? Yes, I do. I so do. Wasn't it also a place where you got ice cream? Somewhere in the valley, I think. Um, Kim Richards starred in it, right, the cereal, and I can't remember what that was, the cereal. It was not, um, what was the cereal called? Oh my gosh, I can't remember what it was, but you're absolutely right. Yes, yes, Mystery of Rustler's Cape. Man, see, you guys are good. I'm proud of you. I'm just losing my mind now. I say after having three children, each time I had a child, my brain probably went with them. <laughs> um, something else, you guys, that's really cool. If you ever can take a tour of the Disney Studios, um, you get to go see Walt's, um, his actual room, his office. I haven't even gotten to see that yet. And my friend Terry, who gives tours there, said that this takes place. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even, don't think I ever even got to sit in there and, 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 and see his office. So I'm definitely wanna, gonna go back, try to arrange um, to see his office. But one thing that was really neat is the animation building. I actually have three cells. Um, one was made especially for me, which I treasure. It's Mickey Mouse and Paluto, and Mickey's dressed in the colors of UCLA, a hat and gown, and has a diploma. And um, one of the people that I love, Arlene, who's no longer with us, she gave that to me when I graduated from UCLA. Another cell I have is from Peach Dragon. And then another one I have is from Dumbo, but it's not the cell. It's actually the, um, oh, you're welcome, whoever just said that, who's losing power. You're welcome, thanks. Um, the, um, one was Dumbo. It was actually like a sketching. It wasn't the cell. It was the first pencil sketching of it. So cool. But um, to go in and watch these animators at that time, they are painting those cells. I know it just kind of blows your mind because you think about this man, Walt Disney, who was from Kansas City, Missouri, who just had this dream. And, um, and he stuck true to his dream and what he really wanted. So to have these animators sitting there and hand painting each of these cells. Um, I remember them saying to make like Snow White take the apple and reach it up and bite it. It took like something like 300 cells, I think. Maybe it was only 30. I don't know, but it was an awful lot just to make the hand move up to her mouth. You know, to, like take a flip book, you know, and do it that way. But then each cell is duplicated and hand painted. Blows my mind, blows my mind. Peach Dragon is your favorite Disney movie? Really? Okay. Don't ask me that one. That is so hard, so hard to decide for me. The Rescuers. Okay, yeah, I know that one. Um, Disney, Disney. I know every Disney movie because my kid is, of course. They all, they, um, to, oh. Hi, Heidi. Okay. No, thank you, sweetie, for listening in. Um, I'm going to have to say I, I, I did love Mary Poppins, you guys. Loved Mary Poppins. I do love Aladdin. Um. My kids, oh, let me tell you, we watched every single Disney movie, so I love all those. Hey, what'd you guys think about Mary Poppins Returns? Here's what I found interesting. My kids, we all did it as a family. Loved it. Loved it. But I thought what was interesting is watching the part where they kind of like jumped on the bowl where and, and Mary Poppins, they, you know, jumped into the painting. Back in the day with Mary Poppins, that was all cool and new stuff. They had never done those type of special effects. Part of me was thinking while I was watching Mary Poppins, Return, Mary Poppins Returned, it was really cool, but I wonder how many of the newer, younger kids look at this going, so, so what about those special effects? Um, you know, you've got, what do you call it? Uh, oh my gosh, you guys, what are the cars, you know, the transformers that do all this and all these big special effects that maybe that doesn't mean anything to them. So that just kind of made me sad, but we, I enjoyed it. I so thought it was great and um oh my gosh um okay he's it's slipping my mind the man's name um Hamilton hello um I can't think of it loved him and I loved Hamilton I didn't see him in Hamilton but loved the show Hamilton as well um oh I missed that part the question something about during the 50th anniversary of Disneyland Mickey Mouse 
Oh, Sherman Brothers, yes. Um, you know, it's so funny because, you know, when you're 13 and 14 and you have those men, because they wrote for us, they wrote Showtime. Um, the one was Showtime, whoa, Showtime. That one, they wrote that one. And I don't think I really grasped it until I saw, I think I was watching Mary Poppins, like, you know, video, and I saw the Sherman Brothers name came up. And I was like, wait a minute, are that, is that my Sherman Brothers? So it was crazy. Yes, thank you, Lynn Manuel. Thank you. Yes, hello, Deanna. Thank you so much. I'm just losing it here. I've been at work, you guys, since 8 a.m. doing my my normal desk job. So gotta have to cut me some slack. <laughs> um, gosh, guys, I'm I'm trying to think anything else. What would you want to know? Let's see. What'd you say? But it, Mary Poppins is good. But what? Oh, you couldn't spell it. Oh, hit the guy's name. Yes, <laughs> I totally understand that. Um. Did I enjoy doing the stage shows at Disneyland? Oh, you guys. Okay. I could have done... So, at Disneyland, it was for... Was it 13 weeks? Yes. For 13 weeks, we did three shows a day and two parades a day. Six days a week. And then we would stay and dance to Papa Do Run Run at the Space Mountain stage. Were any of you there that stayed to dance with us? Oh, my gosh. I was in heaven. I was in heaven. I was singing and dancing and had a live, you know, live audience there. And then we get to ride at Disneyland. Um, I mean, and I'm 13, 14, 15 years old. What, what, that's a perfect childhood. I would have stayed there probably forever. I so loved doing that. And then I do remember coming back. We did a Christmas show. Um, oh, someone said, did I keep in touch with Dee? I did. Um, but unfortunately, Dee, Todd's mom had passed away. Um, Deanna, um, Scott's mom and I, we've touched base a little bit. Wait, you were there? Yes, Deanna, you were there at um, Space Mountain Stage and Papa Do Run Run and dancing? Yes, crazy. Um, and some of you might have seen on one of the Facebook posts, um, Frankie. So Frankie is a friend, but a fan that I met when I was there um, uh, so many years ago. And uh, it just, it's just so funny. That's why you guys just mean so much, so much to me. And... Um, your support and your thoughts and your uh, lovely compliments. You guys are just very genuine and real and that just means the world to me. Do you guys remember um, I Can't Smile Without You? And um, if you notice, I always was in charge of Mickey. Um, I don't know why, I always get that way. I did jury duty last, or two or three weeks ago back here in, in St. Louis, and they wanted me to be the foreman. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't wanna be the foreman. I said, pick another person, and I had him pick another guy. But, so I guess I'm always in charge of something. I'm always the spokesperson. But um, I remember I was in charge of, I'm, I'm looking, I'm holding my hand, and I would bring Mickey on stage. I just loved that song and singing that. And then always the friends number where we came down in the audience to get you. But were any of you there for the Christmas show? I remember I didn't want to miss it. And we came out. And I remember the big reindeers that would dance. Wait, what was your experience being fired? Up? Actually, okay. Um, but dancing with the big reindeers and doing that at Disneyland. That was fun too. Okay, so um, being on Facts of Life. So I, I'm not going to use the word that I was fired. We're going to use the word that says, I was released from my contract. See, isn't that a nicer way of saying things? <laughs> um, you know, it was it was interesting. I'm not going to say I was, like, shocked, but in a way I was because so many of those shows, I was, like, one of the main characters in it. You know, I was a part of it with the dieting show, um, the IQ show. I was, you know, Blair and I were doing that fun fighting bit a little bit. So it was, I was just a little surprised. But... You know, in the meantime, when that happened, I was doing some other guest spots, and then eventually I landed the um, pilot. It was a pilot for the show called Best of Times, which I'm back to singing and dancing again. So I loved that. But unfortunately, um, that show didn't get picked up. And you know what? Looking at, back at it now, it was just before its time. Because then you have High School Musical, and now you've got La La Land and all this stuff coming out. But that's what the best of times was. Kind of like a variety show. Do you guys know Carol Burnett? Oh my gosh, love Carol Burnett. I grew up watching Carol Burnett. That was one of the shows I would watch. Love that woman, love that show. Anyway, that's kind of what the best of times was. It was a variety show with skits and, and um, little vignettes and singing and dancing. So I loved it. But I, it was just, it was ahead of its time, is all I can say. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, 
yeah. So um, with Facts of Life, um, you know, again, I kind of, I just take it in stride. Um, Cause I kind of think about, you know, oh, what would have happened if I would have stayed out there? You know, then I don't know if then eventually, you know, I would have met my ex-husband now, you know, and would have had these three wonderful kids because I love my kids and they're blessings. So I would never change that for a world, um, for anything in the world. And it's funny because there's a, it's not a story, it's true, but I, when I tell people, um, so Tom Cruise, before he was Tom Cruise, so Tom, if you're out there listening, um, no, before he was Tom Cruise, we were in Westwood and, um, so you gotta remember, we were all the same age. Tom Cruise, Rob Lowe, Melissa Gilbert, who was a, a dear friend of mine at the time, Demi Moore, all those people, we were all roughly the same age. So we would see each other kind of hang out together. Um, he had asked me out, and I actually turned him down. Um, just kind of because he was just a little, little full of himself even back then before he really was Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. But my kids always go, wait, what? You mean Tom Cruise could have been our father? And I'm like, no, you guys, you wouldn't be who you are if Tom Cruise was your father. <laughs> so it's just kind of a funny story. Um, I'm looking at Disney's new streaming. Any word on seeing the show there? Oh, I, I, which show? Oh, our Mickey Mouse show? That would be kind of fun. I would love to have it come back. It would be great. That that I think that would be fun. They'd bring everything else back. Um, but, you know, it's not up to me. Because if it was, so would be on Then Dancing with the Stars, representing Mickey Mouse, definitely. We'll see. Um, Derek is coming to St. Louis on tour, and I'm going to go see his show. So maybe when I get backstage, I'll drop a little hint. I get to meet Mark Ballas because he was here in St. Louis doing Jersey Boys. And um, Kim wanted me to go say hi to him, so that was kind of fun. And my gosh, he's little. I didn't realize how little he is. Um, but he's a fabulous singer as well as dancer, Mark Ballas is. Oh my gosh, guys, um, trying to think what else to share with you. Um, I don't, some of you might know my sister, remember my sister Jennifer, she's just two years older than me, because she was there a lot in the park um, when she would come to visit. And I have to tell you, it was um, amazing that, wait, are you trying to continuing with theater? Um, actually, I'm going well, to skip for a second about my sister. Someone asked about my kids continuing theater. Obviously, Christian is. But what's really sweet is my other two, Patrick, um, he was mainly singer than dancer. Um, beautiful voice. He actually started an a cappella group with the doctors, and they're called the stethoscopes. I think that's kind of cute. And I said, wear your white coats. And then they sing songs like A Spoonful of Sugar or Doctor, Doctor, Give Me the News, you know, fun stuff like that. And they go around to the patients. Um, so I told him you need to keep doing that because it's a part of who you are. And my daughter actually in Alabama is thinking about if she can work it out with her schedule. She wants to kind of get back into community theater and um, maybe do some parts. I think Footloose is coming up to do that. And I'm like, go for it, go for it. Oh, somebody asked me what is, wait, it's um, someone asked me what my favorite Disneyland ride is. So Disneyland. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's so hard. I gotta admit, I love the Matterhorn. Um, but also, you know what? Alice in Wonderland rides, because you don't have that in Disney World. So I do like that. Um, oh, and when I was there this last time, I went to California Adventure in what I call it the Tower of Terror, but it's not. It's the, what is it? The, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ride. I did that one. Oh my gosh, you guys, I was like hanging in the air when it would drop. I was like raised up out of my seat. That was crazy fun. And um, the line was too long to do it again, but I, I would have so done it. Um, somebody, what, Scott's watching. Hey, Scott, how are you? Do I have any of my Mouseketeer ears? Okay. No. And that's really sad because I, I, I it kind of, part of me kind of feels like I think we should have been able to keep one pair of them. But no, I do not have an actual pair of them. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. Let me think about that. You know what? Maybe I do have the Discovery Day ones, the, the Thursday, the powder blue ones. What makes me think I have those? So my mom, back then when we traveled out there, because you gotta remember, we're gonna be staying like four or five months at a time. We had a big steamer trunk. Okay, that's how we traveled. Um, if I can find the picture, I'll try to post it. And right now it's kind of in storage because I'm um, sold the house. I'm in a smaller a place for right now. Anyway, so it might be in there because that's where I found like my Taco Bell, um, my Taco Bell lovely polyester uniform was in there. And she put everything, the Tiger, do you guys remember Tiger Beat and Teen Magazine, all those? Um, they're all in there. So maybe, I feel like I've seen that hat, that one hat. 
but there was somebody and it's slipping my mind who was sweet and kind and actually made ceramic ears and sent them to me so I have I think it's four sets of ears all of my colors of my costume which was so sweet so if you're listening would you please say something because I can't remember who it was and I feel horrible not remembering um gosh guys um I'm trying to think whatever else we should talk about um yes the trunk yes was on the Disney yes on that interview yes my Taco Bell commercials yes David Egan oh yes it, David yes I love you guys see you're great okay so I'm losing my memory here a little bit I've got a lot on my mind you guys okay <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, shout out to David because that was amazing that he had those. And was it David or somebody else who um, had, wasn't overalls. It was more like a workman's denim blue zip up all in one thing that had our big Mouseketeer logo on the back of us. And we wore them kind of in, in, in between takes. There's one episode where we sang every birthday to Curtis and put a pie in his face and we're all wearing them. Um, oh, but you know what I do have that is really cool? I don't. I don't think there are another one. How was I asked to return to Facts of Life? Um, oh gosh, let me think. So, yeah, because that was, I had been married only a year. I'm not sure if it went through my agent who was kind of like more my friend at the time and they hunted me down or whatever, but they just actually said, we're looking to, to do a reunion show to bring some of the girls back. Would you want to be doing it? And I'm like, oh, what, you have to ask? Of course I'll come back. And, you know, guys, see, look at that one, too. Look at that reunion show, and isn't that weird? Because I kind of was, like, a main part in that one as well. I don't know. Kind of weird. Who knows? Maybe it's just destiny and, and, and somewhere down the line. Oh, thank you, Deanna. I appreciate it. Thanks, sweetie, for saying that. Yes, prayers, prayers always, and good vibes for the future. Thank you, Deanna. I appreciate it. Roy, bye, buddy. Thanks so much. I know, early day. I gotcha. And I don't even know what time zone you're on, on Roy. Um, but um, one thing that's really cool is my mom got me these Mouseketeer bar stools. And they're also on that one interview that I did. And it's got the Disney logo, R, or not Disney, our Mickey Mouse logo on it. And I treasure those. And because of having those, I made the whole basement look like that. Aw, Sue Ann is my favorite character. Thanks, Fax fan. I appreciate it. Wait, didn't Daryl Miller, I know Daryl Miller, yes, he was the one that kind of set up my fan page and website. Is that what you're going to ask, Kurt? I can't see what the bottom says. Kind of waiting and seeing. Oh, so maybe it was Daryl that sent me the overalls. Very well could be. Very well could be. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so um, that's kind of it for now. So I'm doing my job, working on making some moves as I like to tell my kids we talk to each other with maybe some things out in LA and yes loved Sharon Gless she was a pistol to work with and just funny but smart 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 and a wonderful actress and great to give you points thanks for asking that question Emily am I close to Nancy okay so you know what it's really interesting so when I was on Facts of Life and Nancy wasn't she had her, her brother Philip McKeon actually I kind of dated Philip a little bit and so I knew Nancy and whenever I would come around or be around Philip and we were together you know Nancy was there the family everything so it was kind of interesting to say that I was close with Nancy I'm not really but it's not because of anything being bad or wrong just when she came on the show we were off the show and it wasn't like bad like karma or, or we were mad at each other it's just she was doing the show and we went on to moved on to do other things so um, Julianne or Molly at all. So, real funny story, Julianne, so when I was out in um, L.A., I stayed with a girlfriend of mine um, in Santa Monica, and so I go to St. Monica's Parish right there, the Catholic Church, which is great because it brings back memories of my mom because I used to have an apartment there. I think it was down, um, I can't remember where it was, but it was down there by St. Monica's Parish. So I would go there, and I'm listening and looking around, and Julianne is there. Julie Ann is there with, I think she has one little boy. And she came up to me and I knew who she was right away. And it was so fun and so crazy. So I, I, I see her, we text a little bit here and there, but not an awful lot. Molly, no. 
do not, have not got in touch with Molly. You know what? I should make that a point to get in touch with Molly. I probably should do that. Hi, Robert. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Robert. Good to see you. Well, I can't see you, but hi. <laughs> Corey Feldman. What about this? And I missed this part. Um, I'm trying to read. Um, Mindy. So, Mindy was Corey's brother. Yeah. Um, Mindy, sweet, sweet, smart, smart little girl, but... Um, little crazy family there and that's about all I'm gonna say about that because um, I was only 15 at the time but looking back now because I am a parent and have kids and everything else yeah a li little bit crazy there I, I would definitely have to say that for sure um, um, I'm trying to think guys I don't even know what time it is I'm just talking away um, I'm wondering if it's probably how about we give this about another five minutes because for me here it's, what is it? I'm going to check my time. Not that I wouldn't want to stay and talk forever. It's like 9.15. Um, so let's say about like another five minutes. And then I'm, I'm going to have to say goodbye. But you know what? We'll definitely do this again. Because now I'm a pro at doing this. Thanks to you, Scott. Another shout out to Scott. Am I up for Mickey Mouse cast reunion? Of course I am. Of course I am. Oh, Tom, you're welcome. I love talking to you guys. Do I see Lisa that much? Someone's asking. So really cool. I did for a while, then I didn't. And now we're actually back in touch again. And I was trying to meet up with her in Nashville. But when I was going to go to Nashville, she was in L.A. Because her one daughter, I think, is getting married. And then when I was in L.A., she was back in Nashville. But we've been trying to play phone tag at least to catch up. Um, she was so sweet. She did not realize I had you know, gone through a divorce. And she's you know, doing the life coach um, thing, which I'm so excited about. I'm sure she's wonderful at it. So we were going to kind of share stories and touch base. And I was just telling her, if it wasn't for my dear friends and my faith and my sister and my amazing kids, I don't know how people get through life, you know, when, when, you, you know, when it's really rough and hard for you. So, um, so, yeah, I'm hoping to really get more in touch and talk to Lisa a little bit more. Oh, I missed whoever just said that about being a part of their childhood. Well, thank you. Because, you know, people always, like, try to dig out of me bad memories. And I, at least for Mickey Mouse, you guys, I didn't have any bad memories. Um, I don't know if that was because my mom was with me and really tried to make a home for me out in California and keep my life normal and sane. Um, but yeah, I just have wonderful, great memories. Oh, Heidi, thank you so much too. I appreciate it. Um, so, should we do it? Now it's time to say goodbye to all our family. M-I-C. See you real soon. K-E-Y. Why? Because I love you guys. M-O-U-S-E. All right, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.